bit of an impromptu video for you today strange video that I just came up with right now and I thought I would press record and do this. I'm going to go through the best books of 2020 according to Goodreads. Now Goodreads has steered me right and steered me wrong. In the past you just never know so I want to see if I've read these books. I want to see what I think of them. If I agree with Goodreads or not. I, I feel like I've read quite a few new releases this year. Um, so I feel like this year out of any other year would be the year to do this video. So let's dive in. Best books of 2020. View results. We're doing this live right now. Oh, okay. So the winner was The Midnight Library for Best Fiction by Matt Haig. I I have never read this. I also don't have very much interest in reading this. This is about a library where each book represents a diff different path of your life you could have taken. I I just I don't feel very drawn to it. But let me know if you guys have read that. I just, yeah, that's not what I would have chosen. Next, next um, category is mystery and thriller. Let's see. The guest list is the winner. No, I have read this. It was fine. It was okay, but I wasn't blown away. This is the one where we follow different perspectives that take place on a Scottish island. Um, there's a wedding taking place and we follow all of these perspectives. There's a body found on the island. There's nowhere to go. You know that one of them, one of the guests or people in the party did this, murdered someone. And you also find out who was murdered. Okay, I'm sorry if I moved positions. I had to take a call. Moving right along, uh, I think we were talking about the guest list. I'm surprised it's a winner when I really don't think it was that good. I would read more by her. Like I have the hunting party by her, but I wasn't like blown away. That's for sure. Moving on to historical fiction. I might skip some of these categories if I don't really read them a lot. Oh my gosh, best historical fiction, The Vanishing Half one. I have not read that. That is going to be the January book club pick for, um, <clears throat> for Patreon in January. I'm very excited to read it. I didn't mark it as want to read. Anyway, um yeah so that is what one I'm not mad about it because I've only heard good things about that one fantasy is next I I'm not going to dive into my discussion about this because I never really read fantasy house of earth and blood one by Sarah Mass I have not read any of these romance is next it might be the same kind of vibes here best romance from Blood and Ash? I've never even heard that of that. That's the winner. I've only read One to Watch on this list and I hated it. Might be the worst book I read in 2020. Oh God, sci-fi is next. Again, don't read a lot of sci-fi. To Sleep in a Sea of Stars is the winner. Um, Yeah, haven't read it. Horror is next. Now I have a stake in horror. I really want the um, Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires to win. So let's see. It didn't win. It didn't win and I'm really upset about that. It was such a good book. It's my favorite horror book of all time now, but Mexican Gothic won. I have not read that. It's on my shelves. I want to read it, but I haven't yet. I don't know. Is that even horror? For some reason, I got the vibe that that was more gothic. Maybe it's terrifying, and I didn't know that it was that terrifying. I'm skipping humor because I don't really read humorous books. I'm more like death and destruction and sadness. Um, okay, so moving right along to nonfiction, I think I had voted for The Splendid and the Vile by Eric Larson because 
that was amazing. It was either a, voted for that or what was the other one? Hood Feminism. I probably voted for that actually. Instead, Stamped won Racism, Anti-Racism, and You, but this is the YA version that won. I read Stamped from the beginning, which is basically the same thing, but in full form for adults by um, Ibram X. Kendi. It was wonderful. So important to read. I feel like that should be required reading if you care at all about racism and ending racism. Um, so that's what won for that. I'm not mad about that at all. Memoir and autobiography. Let's see. A Promised Land one. I have, okay, so I'm reading A Promised Land right now by Barack Obama. It is magnificent. Let me just say, I'm loving every second of it. I'm listening to it on audio and it's so nice to hear his voice. I am not mad about this at all. Um, I think I had only read Untamed in the rest of the category and it was, it was okay. I enjoyed it, but A Promised Land, absolutely. History and Biography is next and okay, here is where Cast won, which I have desperately want to read. I think I voted for The Splendid and the Vile here and not earlier in nonfiction. Um... I can't really speak to this because I haven't read Cast and I've heard such good things about it. But if you are looking to read anything from this category and you haven't read The Splendid and the Vile and you are interested in World War II whatsoever, oh my gosh, please go and read it because it was fantastic. Science and Tech, am I even going to care? No, we're not going to care about that. We're moving right around along to Food and Cookbooks, also not interested. Graphic novels and comics, I don't really read those either. Heartstopper one, I've heard good things about that. Again, for poetry, I don't really read poetry. Uh, Margaret Atwood one, that is also not surprising. Okay, debut novel. I don't remember who was in there for it, but such a fun age one for debut novel. And it was wonderful. Now, I think I had voted for my dark Vanessa because that just hit me so hard and it felt like such an important book to me about sexual abuse and the victim and how it can affect victims in different ways. I just thought it was masterfully done but Such a Fun Age was fascinating and very much a what not to do as a white person. This follows a black woman named Amira and she goes to nanny for a white family and she is asked to take their child to the grocery store in the middle of the night one night, help them out. She does and the security guards stop them, stop her and say essentially you've kidnapped this child. Very important book about racism but written in a way that's very easy to read like so so easy to read i really like that i'm not mad that she won whatsoever okay ya fiction i'm not gonna have an opinion on that oh clap when you land one and i've read that and i liked it um i can't really speak to the others because i haven't read the others i'm not mad about that that was a really really good one um about two sisters who actually don't know about each other. They are like half sisters and their father dies on a plane um, going from the US to the Dominican Republic and it crashes, the plane goes down and these sisters find out about one another. Um, and it's how they have been raised and how they interact with one another. I thought it was really good, I enjoyed it. Elizabeth Acevedo is an author that I just learned about really this year and I'm really glad that I'm reading her. So why fantasy and sci-fi? I'm not going to care. It's the queen of nothing one. I don't really read a lot of that. Middle grade and children's lit. The Tower of Nero one. I haven't read any of these books. Why wasn't Hollow Pox, Hollow Pox on here? Oh yes it was. 
hollow pox was on here that's what i would have voted for i think at the time i hadn't voted but hollow pox was fantastic start with nevermore obviously it's a whole series it is delightful if you are looking to fill a harry potter void i mean you could always reread that but my gosh the nevermore series is fantastic and so magical picture books i mean i guess i should start paying more attention to this category for nora the anti-racist baby one and i'd actually really love to buy that for her um yeah that's it guys that's it i don't know if this was interesting in any way shape or form me reacting to the goodreads winners <laughs> i haven't read a lot of them but that's okay i can only read so much in a year and I've read over 100 books this year, which is the most I've ever read. Uh, so I'm pretty proud of myself, must say. I hope you guys are doing well. Let me know in the comments below what you think about the winners. Do you think the whole Goodreads Choice Awards is stupid? Like a lot of people do. I kind of do think it's a bit stupid. Or do you think it's ingenious? I would love to know and I will chat with you soon. Bye.